Hello everyone, Ailisha here and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be taking a first look at these Renaissance watercolors. This is a brand that I had heard of before and I've seen a couple other artists here on YouTube talk about them, but I've never had the opportunity to try them myself until recently. These were sent to me from April who has an Etsy shop. We'll talk more about that sort of special situation very soon, but first I want to just show you the colors that I have, and I did get a small palette to set them up in. So my plan here was, as usual, to take the paints in the tubes, put them in a palette, and allow them to dry over the weekend. So I did this initial portion here on a Friday, and then came back to actually test the paints on the following Monday as working from paints fresh out of the tube is different generally from working with them when they are dry. And this is always one of my favorite parts in videos like this to get to film and share with you. All of the paints had a really lovely consistency and they dried beautifully in the wells and for the most part with a couple exceptions that we will talk about the colors reactivated really nicely and they also had a really nice flow to them meaning that the colors when laid down the pigment spread throughout the wash really beautifully and a bit more evenly so if I was to compare them to other brands, I would say like White Knights is a brand where things are a bit more stationary and a bit more heavy and the color doesn't flow as much through a single wash. And then a brand like Core is on the other side of that where the color reacts a bit more like ink and just spreads a ton. I would say that these paints are in between those two as far as the flow and spread of the pigment across like a single wash. Two colors that initially gave me quite a bit of trouble were the raw umber, which you just saw me swatch there. It was very light. This brown matter was beautiful. I love this color so much. And then my Payne's Gray, which as you can see here, the Renaissance is a mix of four pigments. Both of these two, my color in the wells dried and it was very gummy and I had a lot of trouble getting much color out of them. I reached out to April, who is the distributor who sent me these paints, and she recommended mixing the colors in the tube with like a skewer, sticking those down in. So I did try that. I have that to show with you. And as far as the other colors go, I was really happy with all of them. They're vibrant and beautiful. So here is the comparison. The number one swatches are before I like mixed the paints inside the tube with a skewer with a long pokey thing. There was some improvement in the raw umber. April did tell me that this color is generally a little bit better. Mixing it did help a bit, still kind of light. And the Payne's Gray, there was a massive amount of improvement in that color. So if you do run into an issue like this with this color or similar ones, I can say that it does help to mix them up. It's a little bit of a messy process and it's hard to recover all of that paint when you're digging a skewer down into the tube. And ultimately with these colors, that step was worth it. I did do a separate, like more watery swatch on the Payne's Gray to see how much granulation we have in that color. 
which is another interesting thing that I want to talk about. I know that Payne's Gray is a favorite for a lot of people, and this color does have PB29, which is ultramarine, a common granulating color, and it reacts differently from other Payne's Grays. As I was thinking about all of this, I really just wanted to take the opportunity to show a couple of comparisons in this range to some other similar pigments that I have. So the first color I wanted to talk about was this PR254, which is one of my favorite warm reds. I wish I had thought to swatch my handmade PR254, but I didn't think of it while I was doing this. So here you can see some comparisons. The two PR254s from Sennelier and Renaissance are very similar. Here they are dry. The Asaro 255 is a bit warmer. These are more of an earthy red, especially when you mix them with other colors. They mix much earthier tones. This Payne's Gray comparison is one I was really looking forward to. I feel like, at least for me, the Daniel Smith Payne's Gray is the one I'm most familiar with. It's just ultramarine and a black pigment. It granulates very heavily and is a beautiful tone. Core Payne's Gray actually doesn't have ultramarine blue in it and it's made up of three pigments, a blue, a black, and a violet or red, depending on how that PB19 works in this blend. That's a beautiful dark color, a bit more blue, doesn't granulate, and this is the Renaissance Payne's Gray. Again, this is before I mix it up with a skewer, so it was lighter, but you can see this one has PB29 and PB13, which is phthalo blue, and ultimately it doesn't have as much granulation. It's hard to see much granulation in this one, but it's still a really pretty tone. For the raw umber, I have Sennelier's raw umber, which as you can see when I squeezed it out of the tube, there was some extra gum arabic there, but still a really nice, beautiful, warm blue. And with this uh, Renaissance Raw Umber, this is before I had skewered it and mixed it up, so it was lighter. I did have a bit more trouble getting a bunch of color out of it, but you can see that this is a bit of a cooler brown, not quite as warm. Still relatively a pretty shade. The lighter tone in the raw umber I found made it difficult for mixing just because I had to use so much more of it, but I think that if I had chosen a different brown, I did select these colors from April's Etsy shop. If I had chosen like a burnt umber or a burnt sienna and maybe like an indigo instead of Payne's Gray, my first impressions could have been a bit different just by switching up a couple of colors. So far, those have mostly just been things to note up to this point and ways that these paints may vary from others. So let's talk a little bit more about these paints and about how I got them. Renaissance watercolors are made in Poland, and if you've seen other artists on YouTube talk about this brand, then you might know that you actually, for the most part, can't really get these paints in the United States. Like, you're not going to go on uh, Blick Art Supplies and, you know, just purchase tubes or pans of these. April has an Etsy shop called A Little Creative, and she is the U.S. distributor for these paints, which I think is really interesting. She was able to reach out to them and inquire about being the U.S. distributor, and now she does that. I think that that is a really cool arrangement, so now people in the United States can try these as well. Overall, I did really enjoy working with these watercolors. I didn't have any issues with like layering or lifting that scarlet red really toned down the saturation of a lot of my mixes as it was a color that was mixed into you know the majority of the things going on in this painting and it was really helpful for subduing a lot of my mixes and adding a lot of softness to everything which i ultimately really enjoyed the experience of Figuring things out with that raw umber and the Payne's Gray did shift my overall experience in a way that I wasn't really expecting. But ultimately, I was really grateful that April was so helpful and communicative and I could just reach out to her with any questions and she was there to help me out. For this painting itself, I am working on cold press paper, which may or may not seem like a big difference to you, especially for a video. I'm so used to editing paintings done on hot press paper 
that the texture here seems like not necessarily jarring but like so apparent and so different to me because the majority of the time especially recently I work with hot press paper but I was recently working on some small Patreon originals and I did all of those on cold press paper with a different watercolor palette and it just made me really excited about using cold press so I wanted to try it out with these paints. I talked a little bit before about the flow of these and that's hopefully something you can see in these various washes and layers. Even when I laid the paint out in one particular area, if I wanted the pigment load to be heavier in one area, especially working wet into wet and then I wanted it to fade out to a lighter color, that was a little bit difficult for me to manage compared to when I'm working with other brands because these paints flow so much. So if you have trouble getting like flat washes and getting just clean washes with watercolors something like this could be really helpful these paints because they do flow really nicely you know in a single wet layer but maybe something to consider if you like to have a little bit more control over where that pigment load goes and how it spreads and flows. I did do some tests on hot press and cold press paper as I know that that can make a difference and I found it to be similar with both. I would love to hear from all of you. Let me know if these paints are available where you live or if you've heard of them or tried them or what your favorite colors from the range are. I will leave links to April's Etsy shop down in the description, of course. There are a lot of options. You can buy individual tubes of these paints. You can buy like dried half pans. You can get like the complete range of 54 colors. There's a 24 color half pan set that includes a tin. 48 color half pan set that includes a metal tin. Just lots of options. And the price is pretty great for these. The half pans are $4.25 US and the 15 milliliter tubes, which is a nice big tube of watercolors, those range from $7.50 to $9.50 depending on the color. It was a little bit of trial and error to get all of these colors to work the way I was used to, but the ones that worked smoothly right out of the tube were beautiful. I was really happy with them. And I think that if you're looking for something new to try, or if these are available in your area, you won't be disappointed with them.
Another big thank you to April from A Little Creative who has been so helpful every step of the way and so accommodating because we've actually been talking about me trying out these paints for a long time and there was like issues with my P.O. box and all of this and she was just so helpful and accommodating. So thank you to April for giving me the opportunity to try out these paints. As always, a huge thank you to my members here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. It's a brand new month, February is just starting, so we'll have a new round of digital downloads and real-time Q&As, all sorts of fun things over there. So you're welcome to check out either of those platforms if you'd like to support me and this channel further. You can find this original painting for sale on my website and there will be prints available as well. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you and I will talk to you all next week. Bye bye!